Okay. As you heard, my name is Rupert Lück. I'm head of IT services for EMBL Heidelberg. I'm uh, going to present you the Helix Nebula uh, flagship showcase for EMBL, which is uh, to set up a large scale genome analysis facility on Helix Nebula. And by this, I hope to demonstrate to you why biology and the life science uh, have a high need to, uh, for an infrastructure that can cope with big data, and also uh, why we need high performance computing and uh, hopefully uh, available on, on demand. But before I start, I, I see it, it's, it's really a large audience. And uh, so since, since I came here one and a half years ago, and uh, when, when this, this uh, initiative uh, took off, uh, it, it really has, has gained a lot of momentum, and, and this is very, very exciting, and I have to say, and, and I hope this, this will carry on. And, and I'm sure in, in one and a half years from now, Marilyn, the, the room will not fit. Uh, so <laughs> hopefully we, we will carry on and, 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 and uh, really, really uh, fulfill our, our promise. Okay, so um, before I go into the details of the flagship, um, what is the HACK EMBL, uh, the European Molecular Biology uh, Laboratory, and, and what we do? So EMBL is similar to CERN and ESA, an intergovernmental research organization which is uh, supported by, similar to the others, 20 member states, uh, plus one associated, which is Australia. We are one of uh, the world's foremost life science institutions um, and uh, have uh, about 1,500 staff uh, with over 70 uh, nationalities uh, in our labs. We are located uh, across Europe in five, uh, f uh, four different countries, uh, in Germany, France, the UK, and also in Italy, the headquarters being in Heidelberg. Um, the missions of EMBL, I would also only mention uh, the core mission, which is uh, to fulfill on uh, basic research in molecular biology, but also to provide services uh, in molecular biology to the member states. And this is probably the aspect where Helix Nebula and our engagement uh, with the flagship uh, comes in to place. Um, in terms of understanding what EMBL is dealing with in uh, their uh, in, in their in the in the basic uh, in the basic research, it is basically summarized with the term of systems biology. Systems biology is trying to understand the concepts, the dynamics concepts that uh, are necessary in order to. Uh, explain how you can how, how an organism develops just from a mo from a molecule, and how do we explain complexity or development of, of organisms or phenom uh, phenomena uh, phenomena such as aging or disease? And one of the core elements and one of the core molecules that plays the biggest one of the biggest roles in that uh, focus is the DNA, as everybody knows. Um, but in order to understand the concepts between DNA and what DNA is, is, uh, is including and can build, you need to understand the sequence. So the individual sequence of the basis of the, the long strand of the DNA, which in the case of the humans uh, can be is, is uh, up to three billion individual base pairs. So it's very long. It's a lot of information uh, that, you have to, that you have to analyze and, and that, you, that you have to make sure that you have it all in, in, in the right place. One of the technology uh, revolutions that have helped in the recent years to make advancements in that is, is a technology which you call next generation sequencing. So it is a very, very fast uh, method to, uh, and parallelized method to analyze uh, genomes. And uh, nowadays, so you can uh, sequence, um, just, just to give you an overview, you can sequence up to a billion base pairs, uh, bases per day, whereas 20 years ago you could only do a, a, a thousand. So that this dramatic revolution has uh, also um, implied a, a lot of uh, decrease in, in the cost of sequencing. So with the advent of the next generation sequencing uh, technology, we saw that not, all, not no more uh, the costs will follow Moore's law, uh, but they will decrease much more dramatically, and that has a, f a few consequences, and, and that will probably explain uh, why we are after uh, <coughs> cloud computing uh, in a minute. So this technology has become really affordable, and it is used and widely adopted in many research domains and, uh, and, uh, uh, and, and diagnostic domains, uh, being that academic uh, or medical research or in pharma, pharma comp uh, companies and development of new medicines. 
uh, and treatment uh, as well as in uh, agri agricultural research. Also, it has helped a lot in uh, analysis and, and studies of, uh, of diseases such as the, the, the German EHEC outbreak or in diversity studies such as the Thousand Genomes Project, uh, the Cancer Genomes, uh, ICGC Cancer Genome Projects, or the um, Biodiversity Projects such as the uh, 10K Genome Project where 10,000 genomes of different organisms are, are being sequenced and uh, the diversity uh, studies are, are carried out on, on, this, on, this, uh, on this data. So it is affordable, however, there's a downside. So if I'm, if I'm to referring to being affordable, it is probably this part that we have in the lab. So you can extract your DNA, you prepare it, and you put it into these sequ uh, uh, fantastic sequencing uh, machines. But what these sequencing machines spit out is not the three billion base pair long strand. It is, it is rather very short fragments of uh, a hundred uh, of a hundred or a few hundred bases, which you then need to puzzle together into one one long strand, and this uh, process we call assembly. So it's really solving a, a big puzzle. Then on top of that, you need to annotate, um, and this annotation is really making sense out of these uh, out of these uh, individual sequences. So to say. In this area, we have a genome A, this er uh, a gene A, in this area, we have a gene B, here we have an enhancer, here we have a promoter, so that you really understand the functionality uh, of, of, these, uh, of, of your genome or of the part of the genome. And this is, guess what, it is very compute, very data intensive, and this is where, uh, where uh, and on top of this also, you need a lot of expertise in terms of bioinformatics. And, and there's a couple of people that uh, EMBL really uh, has, uh, has, uh, has has helping us uh, in in that area. So and that that's that's probably and this and these infrastructures probably do not eventually not exist in all of the labs that employ these technologies. So um, that is probably the selling point for uh, for for these for this infrastructure that we are setting up. To give you an overview about exponential growth of this technology and how is it adopted. Uh, we have seen in a, in a series from uh, 2008 to 2011, only three years, an increase from almost zero. And of course, we have done sequencing before, but this is just only uh, through using next generation sequencing. So we have an increase from zero to uh, 35 billion uh, bases that have been sequenced in the lab. Um, and of course, uh, that was only 2011. Also, in terms of data that is coming to our disk and need to be analyzed, it is, um, I'm not sure if that is still correct, but it is more than 25 terabytes per data of, of data coming from the individual technologies, and there's a whole vari variety of, of technologies uh, and next generation sequencing experiment uh, uh, devices uh, going to be applied. And this uh, requires powerful high performance storage uh, plus computing. If you look at a more global scale, uh, what what is the what what can what 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 is the, the global challenge? Uh, you might you might want to look at uh, how many species are there that we can that scientists can analyze. It is close to nine billion uh, nine million. Sorry. Uh, then on in top, the, in in terms of uh, in terms of uh, personalized genomics, which is uh, uh, which is a topic which is uh, becoming more and more relevant in in uh, in, uh, in medicine. Uh, we have. Uh, seven billion people who are of uh, of, of whom probably a, a large fraction could be suspect of uh, uh, of, of this uh, of using this technology in, in the future and to analyze their genomes in order to understand uh, medical treatment better or individualized uh, treatment and, and better and enhanced treatments in in the future. Um, if we look how much data throughput can be generated by, let's say, only the market leading the mar market leading devices and, uh, and uh, that are that are prov that are deployed worldwide, um, which is 15, 1,500 of, of these Illumina high seq dev uh, devices, we have uh, uh, we have several petabytes of data uh, that are generated or exabytes uh, of data per year. So it's a lot of data that needs to be analyzed and needs to be looked at. And uh, not all, as I said, not all of the labs uh, have the uh, relevant infrastructures. So our proposal in is, is definitely to create an infrastructure in, in terms of understanding and, and to provide large-scale uh, genome sequencing based on on-demand processing capabilities that is uh, offered by Helix Nebula. Uh, cloud storage, uh, on-demand cloud storage in, in uh, uh, facilities, and also the capabilities why we are already in the cloud so that we can leverage the potential of existing 
uh, infrastructures such as the European EMBL's European Bioinformatics Inf Institute uh, in, in the UK or other resources uh, such as the NCBI or other, um, you name it, resources uh, for analyzing your data, for enriching your data, for archiving your data and, and things like this. We have, uh, similar to the other organizations, um, on the, uh, gone through a proof of concept with uh, several uh, of the providers. We have basically tested three uh, cloud uh, infrastructures uh, that were provided by Atos, Six Squared, um, uh, and Cloud Sigma and T systems. Each of these clouds uh, have been tested in uh, individual incremental steps of increasing complexi uh, complexity. And the major co software components we tested uh, were, uh, first of all, the assembly and annotation pipelines uh, with software uh, from the Sanger Center being the uh, assembly, pipe, uh, the assembly uh, pipeline SGA from, from the Sanger Center. Um, also the annotation pipeline uh, on the basis of Ensemble, which is a joint uh, project uh, also by the Sanger Center and the European Bioinformatics Institute. Um, I think I have mentioned that we have a need for providing fast shared file systems uh, so that we can make the compute infrastructure happy. We tested cluster as, uh, as, a, as a component. Um, and in terms of uh, automated provisioning of cloud resources, uh, based on your needs so that you can really can start and create your clusters on demand to the size that you really need where, where your requirement is. We use a, a software that is called Star Cluster, which is basically originating from uh, the MIT. Um, to elaborate a little bit more on Star Cluster, Star Cluster, what does Star Cluster for us? It, I mentioned it provisions uh, the the cloud uh, the cloud instances, so it it, pro it helps us with provisioning the images and setting up the cluster. It requires an EC2 Amazon EC2 interface, and it can also deal with fluctuating workloads. So it can terminate instances, it can add more instances uh, where they are needed. And in terms of scheduling all these individual jobs, we have thousands of jobs that need to be run in 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 a in a pipeline. Uh, we, uh, the, the Star Cluster also implements uh, automatically a, sun, a full blown Sun Grid Engine cluster, uh, which, uh, which, which, uh, which takes care of, of uh, orchestrated scheduling of, uh, of the individual jobs. So, in terms of under, uh, schematically understanding uh, how, the, how, the workflows, uh, how, how the workflows come into place, we have customer data, um, next generation sequencing customer data in the order of hundreds of gigabytes coming to our platform. And then we have Star Cluster as the component which helps us to automatically deploy the shared file system that can, on, uh, in this very fast capacity, very fast performance, uh, in the order of gigabytes per second, which is a lot for, for cloud computing uh, resource, uh, provide and, and make happy the individual uh, grid engine, standard grid engine uh, HPC cluster uh, compute nodes, which also are automatically deployed uh, based on a command set uh, from, uh, from, from Star Cluster. In order to show you a few of the results that we, uh, that we gained from the, the pure proof of concept, um, I have list. Uh, I, I show you um, the the uh, the set of, of annotation jobs and uh, the sustainability and, and throughput of the Sun Grid Engine uh, cluster. We see here 20,000 jobs across uh, one hour, um, just uh, equally distributed on the 15 of the on the 50 nodes. So the Sun Grid Engine works quite effective. It works quite fast, and uh, also it's it's quite sustainable over over a longer time. Also. Uh, the file systems, uh, we, the file system that we have implemented with ClusterFS is very capable. It is very uh, providing very sustainable uh, throughputs. Uh, in this case, 60,000 I/O blocks uh, per second for an annotation jobs on uh, on uh, on 50 nodes. So it's that that's quite decent, and that's already comparable to what you can achieve in uh, in an, in a local uh, data center that that you operate. So. <coughs> To summarize the results, we successfully tested all of the vendor infrastructures uh, that have been deployed so far. Um, the Star Cluster API integration worked and helped us to auto provision sets of 50 uh, node cluster setups. We used real world data, real world uh, sequencing, genome sequencing data, um, which resulted in hundreds of thousands of jobs, which were successfully run and were a mix of quick parallel or longer running jobs. We had, sim we had several jobs. 
uh, that needed to run for one and a half weeks, I, uh, I, I think I remember. And uh, this, of course, needs, this, of course, requires that your, that your storage is very, very stable and, and that your environment is very stable because you cannot afford to, to relaunch that or you should typically not do that. Um, also, we, I mentioned the I.O. levels, which were quite decent. Uh, also, the initial hurdles in terms of image deployment or conversion between the different suppliers, uh, star cluster integration, we were able to solve quite, uh, quite happily. Um, I want to show you nothing is, I mean, all the star class and all this fancy stuff and, and, and high performance and, 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 and all these kind of things and scalability and elasticity doesn't do anything for the user if you don't provide a, a good user interface. So we have done additional work on, on, that, on that area and I hope that I can show you a little bit of, uh, of, of what we have developed so far. So this is a user interface that we have developed uh, there in the recent months. Uh, which gives you, it gives the user uh, access to file management, uh, to setting up uh, the, their cloud environments based on their on their individual needs. So depending on what kind of uh, size they, they are they are working on, uh, starting and stopping monitoring the, the different pipelines and and, uh, and the statuses. And this uh, this piece here, if I can get that to run, I should show you something like uh, the setup of oh yeah. The setup of, of the uh, and the bootstrap of the annotation pipeline. So what it does basically, it, it takes uh, it, it fetches um, the basic database uh, setup, the MySQL tables from the EBI. It creates uh, it creates the relevant database and tables configurations and, and deploys the, the API so that you just with a click can run your your individual um, the, your individual survey. Um, and then uh, you have an you have an area where you can watch your pipeline. Um, also, I could probably show you something about that. Um, and this, uh, this, this pipeline dashboard gives you access to uh, how many jobs are we running, how many are active, how many have terminated, uh, what is the failure rate, uh, how much uh, DNA, uh, uh, how much uh, genes do you, did I analyze, uh, what about the proteins, and what is the status of, of these things. Also, there's some uh, information uh, in terms of billing and, and, uh, and the like. So this, all of this is, is live, uh, live and real life uh, uh, data and it, which is ad hoc available through using uh, latest technology, uh, web development technology. So all of this is based on web sockets and with a modern browser you can follow up uh, in real time uh, what, uh, what, you, what you have, in, uh, what, uh, how, how, your, how your implementation and how your cloud is, is, is just <coughs> running and behaving and, and giving you as, as, an, as an output. In terms of next steps, um, we will certainly uh, integrate the uh, EMBL flagship, uh, and we are very curious to, to go ahead uh, with the first implementation, uh, implementation of the Helix Nebula Blue Box, which was uh, already introduced partly this morning. Um, we will extensively testing uh, the aspects, uh, the different aspects in, the in this federated uh, cloud. And of course, feedback all the results um, uh, uh, to the requirements management in the Helix Nebula Consortium. We will need to continue some work on the UI uh, focus. Uh, and more importantly, in the end, we want to definitely go live with that in 2013. So we are aiming at putting this uh, into production very soon. And with that, I would like to acknowledge and uh, close my talk. Uh, and thanks go to the teams in EMBL and uh, EMBL EBI who have uh, done a fantastic job in order to make all this happen. And also I'd like to mention uh, the four companies that have helped us uh, particularly well and, and provided us with the infrastructure. Atos, Cloud Sigma, T-Systems, and Sysquare with their infrastructure for the cloud uh, pilot. Thanks very much.